Hey, Jay here. We've got a little tip for you today on fuel pump rebuild on a KTM. This is a 450 EXC. It's the same for most KTMs. We've got a whole rebuild kit with a filter, and that's what's wrong with this one right now is the filter. So we're going to show you that. I'll actually start this thing up, and you can actually see this filter. They crack, and I'm sure many people who are aware of this have seen them. They crack, and you can actually see it pouring out. Since we're going to replace it, we're going to go ahead and do the pump and everything at the same time. We have this complete all balls kit uh, that's at a really good price to rebuild the entire thing. Sometimes the pump does fail, sometimes it's a filter. This kit has everything all in one. It's a little squirting. A lot of times you'll see bubbles. In this case, we see it actually squirting out of the filter, especially as you rev it up. So in this case, as you could see, it was squirting out, so it was really obvious. Um, sometimes you can't tell, so you can change just the filter and you want to check your pressure. You can make simple gauge. Taco Moto has a really cool gauge. This is one a friend of mine made up. Uh, we'll show you this gauge in line, and it should be, uh, there, the, you can look it up, but it's like 3.6 bar, and in bar, and then I think in foot pounds, like 47 to 50 uh, PSI is what we should see. So I'm gonna plug this in right now, and you can actually see how this thing runs. As you can see, we were about half the pressure we should have been. So right now, we're going to swap this out, give you some tips. We won't be full step-by-step. Step. We're going to pull the tank off, pull that pump out of the tank, and give you some step-by-step step on what we're going to do to make this thing right again. Okay, so one of our first steps after we've dumped out the fuel, we're going to take off the nuts off of the fuel pump here. And it's uh, not too difficult at this point, but it's kind of nice to get wire on here. Uh, we've kind of learned which one I think the, we'll try the other side. The other side has a little more sticking out um, to run the wire up. If you do the wire, we have an aftermarket tank on this bike. So it has an IMS tank, which is a little larger. Um, the, one of the big kind of tough things on this is getting the wire run back through the tank. So we have a 19 on this fitting here. I'm going to loosen that. And we're going to see if we can get the You can see the O-ring inside there, way in there. We're going to make sure that doesn't get damaged. So with that O-ring out of the way, we can get our wire on there. This will save you a little time. You don't have to do this step this way. I have a video showing how to feed the wire through, but if you do it right now, you don't have to feed the wire through the tank, which is kind of nice. So. This way, when we pull the pump out, we can run the wire all the way through the tank and we don't have to do it twice. Just like so. Now we can pull off the nut that holds the fuel pump in place. Our guy here likes to tie a wrench to it and that way you don't accidentally, which I've done, accidentally pulled the wire all the way through the tank and have to do it again. My helper here has learned this and so he has uh, vowed not to do it again. We just need an 8T handle and we'll take off the, the bolts that hold the fuel pump pickup in the rear here. We'll take those four bolts off. Out comes the fuel pump. And at this point, we can undo our wire so we can work on our fuel pump by itself. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a, a lot of pieces. It's kind of nice to get your bearings and lay everything out. And so here we're going to change our filter right here, which has the crack in it. We got our two like ear type uh, clamps. And then they come with hose clamps here. We have some ear clamps for this piece. So this piece is going to run from the fuel pump to here like this. And then we'll, we'll use our cool tool to, to set that. So we're going to run this pump to here, to here, like so. This piece right here goes inside the pump when we get that apart. So we've kind of got everything laid out. We'll start getting that built right now. So we're just gonna start putting this thing together. Uh, our clamps are a little tight. We can get it on here like, like this. And then you wanna make sure you got it going the same direction as the stock one. The stock one has an arrow here. It's pretty self-explanatory there. If you line it up like this, if you, if you line it up like so, uh, you'll be, you're in good position. So not too hard. Also here, it's a good idea 
to make sure to I, we take a photo first so you see the red wire is right here black wire on the bottom you want to make sure that you kind of angle set everything up so you can pay attention to how it goes back together we're going to cut our fittings off here for the fuel filter line previous to this there hasn't been a lot of you know complete kits that you could do this and rebuild your entire fuel pump setup filter and pump at the same time there's kind of these little buttons to push here on the body and you can separate it up there's two of them and you can just work it out here with your screwdriver and then you can get this the whole pump kind of assembly apart it's got a little housing so now we got it all apart we can start get our fuel filter off and get everything out of the way here completely just like so you can actually see see it squirt out right there at the seam at the seam of the filter I can feel it with my finger coming right out of the filter so that's our weak spot in this case the fuel pump is probably just fine but since I have this complete kit we're gonna swap it all out right now okay so on this one you can see this one has a little V cut in right here and this one doesn't and this I think is specifically for this bike so this V is clearing right here and it clears nice on this one we're gonna have to cut this one away on, on this on this area right right here okay so as you pry up on this old uh, outer filter here you can get these two little clips off I'll give you a little shot of those the, the one clip and the other one's like a little a little washer spacer we got a little washer spacer and then their little clip we'll need those for our new one so we've got our clip on here and we're just gonna push it on with a six millimeter nut driver just like so so it just presses on it's a kind of a press fit we're dropping our pump all together back in the clips just clip right in place so we're good now if you pay attention to your your photo then you know which way to put your electrical connectors back on okay so after further analysis here you can see that you have a small a small tab and a big tab for plus and minus so it's somewhat idiot proof here which is good for guys like us as well so you can just plug these right back in no uh, worries I, I always like to be safe for then sorry and take a photo but this is really easy on this pump as far as the size of these two clips is very self-explanatory now we're gonna hook up our line our fuel line with our fuel filter and we got this kind of ready to go on. I'm gonna slide that on. I need a little persuasion, and it's all the way on there tight. We wanna move our little fitting to where it can be nice and in a good position. And then we can put in our other fitting right here on the other side. And I like these kind of you know ear clamps rather than hoses, hose clamps. Hose clamps would be just fine, but it's not quite as uh, tidy and since we got the cool tool we'll clamp that down just like so now we gotta get to our last and this is a little tight in here to get in and make this connection so we're gonna rotate the clamp around to where we can get our tool on here nicely Yeah, now we got a good area here. I'm going to hold these wires back from my guy here so we don't cut anything. We don't want to. So we got that good and tight. So we got a clamp here tight, clamp here tight, clamp here tight. So we're going to put a zip tie back on that. We cut a zip tie off. So we're going to run that zip tie. Go ahead and run that through there, Dave, where we need it. So we'll run this zip tie. We had to cut one off while we were. This just kind of keeps everything, you know, in here tight and tidy. Okay, so now we're going to re-zip tie up our wires. We're going to kind of make it all tidy here. Get everything zip tied together. We got a nice little zip tie. 
just like so. Get some nice little flush cut zip tie pliers. Everything's nice, tight. We're ready to start assembling this back into the tank. We noticed that one of our connectors, the, the ground one, the, was a little bit loose. So we kind of snugged it up a little tighter. You want to be real careful with this, but we want, we want that thing to be good and tight when it slides onto the post. You don't, you don't want this thing sliding off and, and causing you any problems uh, later. Because if it were to slide off, you'd lose fuel pressure. And uh, the, anytime you lose fuel pressure is bad. So now we got it good and tight to go on. Yeah. So you want to, and you can test it just by pulling on those, giving a little tug on those wires. Go ahead and tug on there a little bit, Dave. So we just want to, you want to see that it feels good and secure just like that. So now we just undid the wire off of the, the wrench so we didn't lose it. You just wrap it around just like so. And you want to make sure you're tying it to the same hole that the wire is coming out of down on the bottom, which in this case, it's the small one, just like so. And then we're going to tighten up our wire tire pliers a little bit. And you, if you got it, oh, sorry, I didn't have the camera on here very good. So let's get in here and get a good little angle. See, we're right here on the back side of the thread so it can't pull out. Now we can feed it through the tank. I've got a good video showing you how to do this if you haven't started, but now you can feed it through just like so. And on the other end, you can be pulling. It does help if your buddy's helping you hold the tank here. It is a little tricky to get it all kind of fed through the right way. I don't know. I think it might be a little easier on the IMS tank. Maybe not. But you can, you know, you can see through it, which helps you a little bit. And you can see in there a little easier. So here now we got it lined up. We're going to grab our large nut here. This is a tricky deal, but we've kind of gotten it down over the years. Um, just take your time and have some patience. And now we're ready to put our O-ring, take this wire off. We'll tighten this up and then get our O-ring on here after we get our wire off. We'll yes, Okay, so we've got our, our wire off now. We're ready to put our O-ring back on, and we've got a little grease on the O-ring. It's always nice. Uh, we're actually reusing our old O-ring, which is still in good shape. Uh, a new O-ring would probably be a smart move right here if you have one. Um, slide that on. Now we can put our fittings back on. Again, a little grease is nice to uh, get on, get on these, these pieces, on these rubber O-ring pieces as you tighten them back up. And these don't have to be really tight um, and get them good and snug. If you over tighten this stuff, you can misshape the tank and all that. So you don't want to do that. You'll feel them just kind of get good and snug. In this case, our lines are already set up for this IMS tank. So we don't have to worry about changing anything with our lines. So in this case, this, this, lower, this lower one was moving really hard to get a thin 19 in there. So I put my wrench in, my screwdriver in here like this and just brace it a little bit, and we got that good and firm tight right there. Now this is pretty simple. We just get our uh, bolts back in here, and we're just gonna tighten these back up. The O-ring in here, you just wanna wipe it off, make sure you got good, that it's, it, it usually stays pretty much in place, uh, so that on that big old thick O-ring, and it usually never really wears out. So we got our tank plugged back in here. We're gonna put our seat on now. We got everything tight on the tank. We'll put our seat on and put some fuel in this thing.
Okay, so that's a good wrap on this install with this rebuild kit. If you've seen that All Balls kit, it comes with some extra components. Those are for other models. There's a bunch of other models this, this fits, the kit fits. And so real reasonable price kit. As you can see our, on that uh, little video, our full pr fuel pressure is back up there, over where, right over where it's supposed to be. So we're in good shape, really excited now. Uh, just so you know what I was experiencing, how we noticed this on this EXC. In particular, you'll notice in this case, it was just really slow, it was feeling luggish and it, sluggish, and it happened slowly. So at first we didn't notice it. And being a 450, we were like, oh, it's just, we, we didn't really notice it. And then eventually we're like, this thing's only going 60 miles an hour wide open. And this thing used to go well over 80. So that's how we started. No and then po we popped open the tank. We're like, oh, this thing's shooting fuel. Then we figured out it was the fuel pump. And so do, able to do a fuel pressure check. So having that gauge, like I said, Takamoto has those gauges. I think there's a few other people. You can make your own gauge. Uh, that'll help you always be able to check fuel pressure on these kind of bikes is going to be important in the long run if you're working on your own bike. Um, that's a real good look at it. Hopefully that helps you out on your uh, KTM, on your fuel filter and fuel pump replacement.